and welcome back to my channel. As you may know, I lived in Jordan for a year and in a lot of ways, living in Jordan felt like stepping into the Bible. I got to see so many of the places that are mentioned in the Bible in real life and it was amazing. And you may not think of Jordan as being the place for biblical sites, but it's right next to Israel, Palestine, and it has some amazing sites that you should definitely check out if you're ever in Jordan. So I'm going to walk you through just a handful of the ones that I visited or heard about and I hope that you get the chance to see them for yourself someday. So the first place that I want to talk about is a place called Bethany Beyond the Jordan and it is on the Jordan River and it's where they believe that Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist when the Holy Spirit descended on him and it's kind of debated between Israel and Jordan as to which side of the Jordan it happened on. So they both have locations. There's one place you can visit from the Israel side and one place from the Jordan side. But I'm primarily talking about the Jordan side, obviously, since we're looking at sites in Jordan. But this, this location is referenced in John. So there's two different places that it's kind of referred to. And the first one is John 1, 32 through 34. And it says, then John testified, I saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove from heaven and resting upon him. This is when Jesus was baptized by John. I didn't know he was the one, but when God sent me to baptize with water, he told me, the one on whom you see the Spirit descend and rest is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I saw this happen to Jesus, so I testify that he is the chosen one of God. And then it's also referenced in John 10, 40, where it says he, meaning Jesus, went beyond the Jordan River near the place where John was first baptizing and stayed there a while. So that's why it's called Bethany Beyond Jordan because it here it references beyond the Jordan River. So I didn't get to visit this site personally, but I've heard a lot about it and it sounds like a really cool day trip to do. And I believe it's only about 40 minutes from Amman. So if you're staying in Amman, the capital city of Jordan, it's a really easy day trip over there. So highly recommend checking this one out. The next place that I wanna talk about is kind of a scandalous part of the Bible. In the Bible, it refers to the Israelites fighting the Ammonites, and Ammonites were living in the area of what is now Ammon, Ammon, Ammonites. In the Bible, in 2 Samuel, it talks about King David and some scandalous things that occurred near Ammon, and let me just explain it. So in 2 Samuel, 11 1 it says in the spring of the year when kings normally go out to war david sent joab and the israelite army to fight the ammonites they destroyed the ammonite army and laid siege to the city of rabbah however david stayed behind in jerusalem so when it's talking about laying siege to the city of rabbah in ammon it's referring to a part of amman known now as the citadel so it's one of the most notable places in Amman that you can see. Now it has like Roman ruins and things there, but at this time they laid siege to that area, that mountainous part of the city of what's now Amman. But the crazy part of this is what else happened there. So in 2 Samuel 11, 14 through 17, it says, so the next morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and gave it to Uriah to deliver. The letter instructed Joab, station Uriah on the front lines where the battle is fiercest, then pull back so that he will be killed. So Joab assigned Uriah to a spot close to the city wall where he knew the enemy's strongest men were fighting. And when the enemy soldiers came out of the city to fight, Uriah the Hittite was killed along with several other Israelite soldiers. So. David is basically ordering the murder or assassination of one of his own military members. And if you're at all familiar with the Bible, you can go and read the rest of the story here, but just to kind of summarize it a little bit, what was happening here is David had seduced Uriah's wife while Uriah was off fighting. And then he tried to get Uriah to come back home and sleep with his wife because she got pregnant from David and David was trying to cover it up. And so when Uriah wouldn't go home and sleep with his wife because he wanted to show loyalty to his men who were still out fighting and he didn't want to have the comforts of home and he felt like that was disloyal to all of his soldiers who were out sleeping you know in the dirt basically so he wouldn't sleep with his wife and so david's like oh well i just i have to get rid of him then so he sends him back 
to what is now the citadel and arranges so that he will get killed on on these hillsides that are now part of the citadel in Amman. If you ever visit the citadel, it's kind of crazy to to look at it and think, wow, this story probably happened right here. The next place that I want to talk about is Mount Nebo. And this is a mountain on the border between Jordan and Israel and Palestine. And from this point, you can look over and see just the whole Jordan Valley. I didn't get to go to this site, but from what I've heard, it's really cool. It's really beautiful to be able to stand up there and see and just think about like, this is where Moses got to stand and see the promised land. And the reason that this is famous is because in Israelite history, God told Moses who had been leading the Israelites to the promised land, he said to him, you can't go in because you disobeyed me in some specific situations in the past. And so God said, I won't allow you to enter, but I will allow you to look over from this mountain and see it before you die. So this occurs in Deuteronomy Deuteronomy 34, 1 through 6, where it says, Then Moses went up to Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab and climbed Pisgah Peak, which is across from Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land from Gilead as far as Dan, all the land of Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah extending to the Mediterranean Sea, the Negev, the Jordan Valley with Jericho, the city of Palms as far as Zoar. Then the Lord said to Moses, this is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I have now allowed you to see it with your own eyes, but you will not enter the land. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, just as the Lord had said. The Lord buried him in a valley near Beth Peor in Moab, but to this day, no one knows the exact place. It's also near here that apparently God himself buried Moses. I think there's some people who have guesses on where Moses might be buried, but I think true to the Bible, no one is 100% sure where Moses was buried precisely. So I didn't actually get to visit Mount Nebo myself, but I've heard from others who've been there that it's a really cool place to go. It's definitely worth doing if you're not able to go into Israel, Palestine on the same trip that you visit Jordan. This at least gives you an opportunity to see the Jordan Valley from Jordan. The last place that I want to talk about is a place called Lot's Cave and this is a cave that is in the mountains above the Dead Sea Valley. It's famous because of, you may be familiar with the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, the evil cities that were destroyed by God, and this is where Lot and his family lived and when God came to destroy the city, he, he told Lot and his family, Family, okay, you can leave because you are the only righteous people in the whole city. So get out now before I destroy. But he said, don't look back while it's being destroyed. But while Lot and his family were fleeing the city, his wife did look back and reportedly became a pillar of salt because she disobeyed God's explicit command. And so Lot and his daughters went on and settled in an area called Zoar, but they got nervous there and decided to leave and ended up living in these caves in the mountains above the Dead Sea Valley. And so in Genesis 19:30, it refers to this where it says, afterward, Lot left Zoar because he was afraid of the people there, and he went to live in a cave in the mountains with his two daughters. There's actually a kind of a scandalous and incestuous story that happens in these caves because in this culture, carrying on your bloodline and your family name was really important, and Lot's two daughters were living with him in this cave alone, and they were like, how are we going to carry on our family name? How are we going to get married and have kids and all of that? And so they came up with a plan that they were going to get their father, Lot, drunk, and they were each going to go in and sleep with him and get pregnant from him so that they could carry on their family name. So they did do that, and whole people groups came from these two girls sleeping with their father and getting pregnant. And I do want to say, just to clarify, in case anyone isn't familiar with the Bible and understands understanding how the Bible works. The Bible does not endorse daughters sleeping with their father, does not endorse incest, any of that. This is simply describing something that happened, not saying that it's something we should apply to our own lives. That happens a lot in the Bible, that the Bible describes things, 
but then there's other areas where the Bible says do this. So it's narrative versus instruction. And this is just narrative of what happened in, in history. So just wanted to lay that out there. But Lot's Cave is a really cool place to visit. I did get to go to this location when my parents came and visited me in Jordan. It's high up above the Dead Sea Valley. And from the top, you can just see all down into the Dead Sea Valley. And it's beautiful. I highly recommend doing it. It's kind of weird to think about some of the things that happen there when you visit, but it is a really cool site. In the Middle Ages, they also built a monastery there, so there's some ruins from that monastery that are also present in Lot's Cave now that you can go and see. This is just a handful of the places in Jordan that you can visit that are referenced in the Bible. There are more but I just wanted to show you a few of them and hopefully if you ever visit Jordan, you can add these to your bucket list. They are definitely worth seeing. If you stuck with us this long, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my future videos. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help me in the algorithm. And thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye.